Word Defibrillator for today. We'll be trusting God for a word from within the Word. Not necessarily going to be a favorite moment, but there should be a aha, because that's what we're looking for from within the Word. So I'm going to ask you a question. Would you like the ability to wait for a long time without becoming annoyed or upset? Would you like the ability to remain calm and not become annoyed when dealing with problems or with difficult people? The ability to give attention to something for a long time without becoming bored or losing interest? Well, 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 can you believe it? This is one of the ways that we do it. Romans 5 says... Well, 5, verse 1, in the Amplified Bible, the classic edition. Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God, through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold on to, to enjoy. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Through Him... Also, we have our access, entrance, introduction by faith into this grace, state of God's favor, in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. Ha! Feels good, eh? Ah, moreover, you mean there's more? Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us exult and triumph in our tr Sorry? Let me just check that again. Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings? No, no, no. Come on. This was feeling so good and fuzzy that we can enjoy the glory of God. Everything is so nice and wonderful. And then it says on top of that, to add to that a lovely experience, you want to get excited? Well, be full of joy and exult and triumph in your troubles and rejoice in your sufferings. We spoke about this yesterday where God will come and rescue those who are suffering and who are broken. And yeah, they say that we need to rejoice and exult and triumph in our sufferings. Why on earth? Would I want to rejoice in my suffering? Why is that a good thing? Why? Well, you see, if you want to learn those skills I was telling you about, the ability to give attention to something for a long time without becoming bored or losing interest, the ability to remain calm and not become annoyed when dealing with problems or difficult people, the ability to wait a long time without becoming annoyed or upset, well, you're almost there. Because you see, if we follow these instructions, where it says, Moreover, let us be full of joy now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the pressure and affliction and hardship. Are you under pressure? Are you being afflicted? And are you in a hardship? Because that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to give you those skills. Because that produces patient and unswerving endurance. You see, those skills relate to patience. That is the skill of being patient. To be able to wait. To be able to focus. Now that's the amazing thing because it's telling us right there and right then that if you rejoice in your sufferings, the reason why you need to rejoice in that is because you're the person that actually understands the point. Because sufferings aren't there to destroy you. They are there to produce good fruit. Patience is part of the, the fruits of the Spirit. And it's saying here that your, your pressure and affliction and hardships actually produce patience and unswerving endurance. And that endurance in verse 4, fortitude develops maturity of character, approved by faith and tried integrity. Integrity is doing what you say. And it will be tried and tested over and over again. And character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope. Of eternal salvation. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us, for God's, God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. How nice is that? So that when you're in a trial or when you're in troubles and uh, 
you suffering, knowing that pressure and affliction, affliction, affliction sorry, and hardship will produce that is needed as a foundation because you see it will produce patient and unswerving endurance on top of that maturity of character and this character that the habit of joyful and confident hope in eternal salvation there's the key is because you know of god's goodness and where you're going this is just a moment in time and it's just building character on a foundation of patience. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that foundation. If, Father, I actually understand now why I need to rejoice. Never kind of always did. Always used to irritate me. Why must I be happy in trials and afflictions? Well, sir, certainly we know that when we go to gym or we do exercises, there's trials, there's afflictions, and there's lots of pain. But the result, Father, is out of this world. We become stronger. And Father, in this we become stronger, a manifestation of your glory and your goodness. And in that people will look upon us and they will praise you. Because they will realize it is good to know the Lord. And I thank you, Father, that through my life, through our lives, that you will be easily recognized by the example we set. And we just thank you, Father, that we have that peace with you we have that peace with god through our lord jesus christ the messiah the anointed one and through him we also have our access by faith into the the grace of god and we will firmly stand on it in jesus name amen